Oh, it is time to go back to school. College baseball right around the corner. Baby alligator upside down. Their brain flips. Oh, Kevin, yeah. They freeze. That's right, Millar. Baby alligators. Talking about grown-up alligators. The Florida Gators are really, really good. Came a breath away from a College World Series championship last year. They are the number two ranked team behind Wake Forest. Uh, and we talked about that program yesterday. Go Gators. And we have Kevin O'Sullivan, who's been there now for uh, 16 plus years, entering his 17th season as head coach. And by the way, Sully, I just got to get this out on you. 681 winning percentage, third best among active Division I coaches. Uh, congratulations on all your success there. And welcome to Hot Stove. I appreciate you guys having me this morning. Let's talk a little bit about the about the Gators. Uh, I mean, it's hard to believe that the season is right around the corner. I mean, you guys have been building and preparing for this all year long. Preview your team this year for it, and how is it different from the one that went uh, to the College World Series last year? Well, every year is different. Obviously, this one's a lot different. We've lost some really, really good players. We lost, obviously, you know, some really good arms and, and Brandon Sprout and Herson Waldrop. And, you know, obviously, everybody knows about Wyatt Langford. Um, but we've we've filled in. Obviously, the portal has made things a lot different for for our sport and every other sport for that matter. Um, but we've got some returning players. We've got some young players that we have to rely on out of the out of the bullpen. But we've got a, a great nucleus coming back. Obviously, led by you know Jack Cagliano. Uh, Sully, when uh, season's getting ready to start, just around the corner, I'm assuming down there uh, in Florida, you want to stay in Florida as long as you can. Uh, do you work that into your schedule, and do your boys get a little bit of weather shock when you have to go anywhere north on that first road trip? Yeah, there's no doubt. If we can stay in Florida, we're gonna we're gonna try to do everything we can scheduling wise. It, it's kind of interesting because we we do the scheduling like two or three years out, but um, more times than not, we like to stay down in Florida. Obviously, there's teams from the north that you know obviously take advantage of that as well. But we're positioned, you know, here in Florida where our midweek games are, are extremely competitive, where our RPI is always going to be, you know, very competitive. Um, we play Florida State three times every year. We play Miami three times every year, along with the SEC schedule. So we're positioned in the part of the country that obviously our our proximity to other talented schools um, obviously gives us um, a bit of an advantage when it comes to scheduling. Has that changed a little bit over the years when you're talking about the strength of schedule and what you're planning to begin with? Because maybe it was my perception of it. A while back, it seemed like, okay, let's put some cupcakes up there early. Uh, let's go out there and see if we can't steamroll some people and get out of the gates well. But now it seems like there's more of this stiff competition early on in the season as well. Yeah, I think the RPI has made that very clear. I mean, the old train of thought was to schedule teams that may not have had the opportunity to be outside as much, and maybe you'd have an advantage. Maybe you could play some more players, pitch some other pitchers that may not have an opportunity early early on in the season. But the RPI and the changes that we've made have made it really clear that they, you know, the committee wants to see a challenging schedule. And, you know, obviously I think most of us have, have listened and have obviously followed suit. College sports recruiting is always something that uh, fascinates all of us here. When Harold Reynolds is here, I know Bill's involved in that, certainly interested in it, as am I. Uh, for you guys at Florida, do you focus on the backyard? I know that you mentioned Jack Caglano. He's a Tampa kid. Is it? Are you looking at your state first, or is it truly a, a, a nationwide endeavor? Well, before the transfer portal and NIL, yeah. I mean, we're still focused on the state of Florida. Mainly, number one, there's a lot of good players in the state of Florida. And with us being a sport that only has 11.7 scholarships, really nobody's on a full scholarship. Mm. So everything's a partial. And obviously the, the in-state with books, tuition, room, and, um, and board, um, as opposed to the out-of-state fees, which obviously can get a lot more expensive for out-of-state students. Obviously, it, it, may, it stretches our scholarship a lot further if we stay in-state. Let's talk a little bit more about Jack. I mean, for uh, for fans that aren't aware of, of his skill set, the guy that led Division One in, in homers last year doesn't strike out a lot, and he pitches. I mean, you're looking at an, an Otani type transformational character on your roster. There, tell our viewers a little bit more about him. Uh, we call him Create a Player. I mean, if you were a Create a Player on a computer, this is what they look like. I mean, you know, coming out of high school, he had Tommy John and the, at the tail end of his senior year. Came in about halfway through his freshman year. He was taking BP. I think he might have been at Vanderbilt. And we came back on that Monday, and I sat down with him. And I'm, 
was trying to convince him that hopefully that we could maybe get him um, into the lineup in some way, shape, shape or form. And he ended up doing that and had some success down the uh, down the stretch of his freshman year. Came back that fall, started pitching, and I think it all dawned on us one inner squad where he threw, he touched 100 on the mound and hit a ball, I would say 117 with exit velocity and wow. just driving home going, we've got a player that has touched 100, hit a ball as hard as he did in the same inner squad game in the fall. It's just different. It's just different. Now, obviously, he's got a long ways to go. He's still 21 years old, but from a talent standpoint, um, obviously, it's just special. Wow. Uh, when, when you go back to the recruiting side, I'm sure that now, what, age 13, age 14, these guys pop up on the radar. Is is there any sort of um, barometer that you have that says, okay, I'm looking at a kid, he's 14, he's 15 years old, but we might not even be able to get him. He might be a first-rounder with the MLB club. And where's that fine line that's about spending time on that recruitment, maybe if you think that player might be a little bit out of your area? Well, it's interesting. Well, the rules have changed now um, as far as when you can t contact players. But I will tell you a quick story. The, the, the youngest kid we ever committed was Riley Green, and that was kind of easy to pick out. Um, right. I think it was like he was like two or three days into his freshman year. But, um, yeah, the recruiting thing has changed. Um, as far as trying to predict who's, who's going to sign out of high school or not, it's, it's virtually impossible. Um, I think you get to a point where you just try to sign as many good players as you possibly can and let the chips fall where they may um, because it's really impossible to try to figure out what this thing is going to look like two, three, four years down the road. You guys have put uh, so many great players into the ranks of, uh, of Major League Baseball, Sully, um, and I'm looking at just a partial list here. Pete Alonzo and Harrison Bader have gotten a lot of run off this winter because they're now teammates. Uh, who, is, who among that, that group is still active with you? Um, who's there? Anybody? I know that the seasons don't always allow for them to be there in person, but who's still active with the program? Well, a lot of the guys from, from time to time. I was, um, you bring up Pete. Pete stopped by a few weeks ago, and he met with us, spoke to the team, took, you know, took a little BP. Mike Zanino lives, lives about 15 minutes here from campus now. He stops by, had a chance to chat with him yesterday. Um, but we've had, you know, we've got a lot of guys that stop in. Um, Sterling Thompson, who was a first round pick a few years ago, came out and took BP with us on Sunday. So um, this time of the year, we tend to hear from the players a little bit more. Maybe they stop through on their way down to spring training, but it's awfully good to hear from those guys, obviously, when they come back. Sully, we sure appreciate the visit today. We wish uh, you and the Gators nothing but success this year. Thanks for taking some time with us on Hot Stove. All right. Thanks, guys. Good, good talking to you. Good luck.